It's flanger time, kids. And I think I mentioned this in another video, but apparently the term flanger and flanging was invented by John Lennon, which I think is a very interesting fact. Yes, today I'm going to be looking at the song A Forest by The Cure. It's an ace song, it's nice and easy to play, and it involves lots of flanging. So in the parlance of our times, what's not to like about that? <clears throat> Must apologise, I'm suffering from a slight cold today, but such is my commitment to making these videos that I'm just going to do it anyway. So A Forest, this was apparently the first top 40 hit for The Cure in 1980, and it's taken from their second album, 17 Seconds, and there seem to be a few slightly different versions of this song around, and I'm not sure whether they're completely different recordings or more likely I think they're just slightly different mixes or edits. I'm sure there are some Cure nerds out there who know what's what and what the differences are between these different recordings, but for this lesson I'm just going to base it on that original album recording, so let's get on with it. As I said, this song is fairly easy to play. We've got three or so different riffs, and then we've got a nice solo towards the end of the song. We're loosely in the key of A minor for this song, although there's a couple of chords which step outside that key. In particular, there seems to be a, a D major sound hinted at, and that could be seen as coming from the A Dorian mode, though I suspect Robert Smith wasn't particularly bothered about the modal implications of his songwriting and chord progressions. Uh, let's kick off with this intro riff then, the one that goes like this. <laughs> And this is nice and simple, it's mainly played with an open A string and then we're just fretting some notes along the length of the D string. So we're kicking off with an open A and then playing the 7th fret on the D. Then we've got the open string again, 3rd fret on the D, open, 2nd fret on the D, open again, back to the 3rd fret on the D. So. coming in on the end of fourths, it's one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Um, that is then repeated. And then the third time there's a little bit of a variation which goes like this. Same kind of idea, we've got the open A string and then the notes on the D string are the 7th the fret, 9th, 10th, and then down to the 3rd. And then we're just playing the original pattern one more time. On the original recording, that is when the drums then kick in and uh, the band enters. On um, other recordings that I've heard or other edits that I've heard, the drums come in straight away and that, that skips that introduction. Once the drums enter, it's really more of the same thing. We've got this same riff. And we repeat that, I think, three times. And then the fourth time is another variation, and that goes like this. So I'll just give you the notes on the D string, and in between those notes you've got more of this open A string. So we're playing the seventh fret, nine, ten, and then we're descending. It's seven, five, three, two, then open D, so... Seven, five, three, two, open D, and then I think there's one more open A at the end of that phrase. Moving on to the next bit of the song then, and this is the verse riff, it's really the main riff of the song. It sounds like this. It's really, I suppose, a, a bass line played on the guitar. We're playing a bass line along the length of the low E string. 
But the interesting thing is we're also allowing the open A string to drone throughout that as well. So the, the bass line part is this. We've just got the fifth fret on the low E string. All eighth notes, we've got a bar's worth of eighth notes there. So one and two and three and four and up to the eighth fret. Two, three, four. First fret. And then the tenth fret. And what you need to do is just make sure you're on the tip of whatever finger you're using to fret the notes on the low E string so that the A string is allowed to ring out. So if I just add in that droning A string, it sounds like this. Sounds really cool, really simple device, but works really well for this song. I think the important thing here rhythmically is to add some accents in the right place. I mean, rhythm wise, it's all just eight notes one and two and three and four and all, all down strokes with the pick. But if you accent some of those eight notes, then it just makes it come to life a little bit. So I think I'm probably going one and two and three and four. And so I'm just playing slightly harder on beat one, one and two, and the end of two and beat four. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And that's going to make it come to life a lot more than just playing even eight notes. But if you add in the accents. Sounds much cooler. The next riff goes like this. Nice and simple to play. This is all played using power chords on the sixth and fifth strings. We're starting with a B power chord, so seventh fret on the low E, nine on the A. Again, all eighth notes down strokes for one bar, one and two and three and four, and moving that one fret higher to a C power chord. Then down to the second fret, this is an F sharp. Back up to the eighth fret for the C. We go around again, so B, C, F sharp, and this time instead of going back up to the C, we're just going one fret lower down to an F power chord. And that, that takes us back to the main riff of the song. Uh, I think the accents can be the same on this, so you're emphasizing the one the and of two and the four. So it's one and two and three. So towards the end of the song, we've got what I'm gonna call a guitar solo, though it's not exactly a guitar solo as we no, it's more just like a, an interesting featured rhythm part, I think. And it's the kind of thing that I think Robert Smith probably wouldn't do the same way twice. So I'm not going to take you through this solo note for note because that would be far too boring. I'm going to explain what's going on and then I'm going to leave it up to you to improvise with it and do it your own way. So the basic idea is that, again, we've got this droning open A string, but this time we're playing a melody along the length of the D string. So we've got this kind of... That kind of idea. And the, the notes on the D string are really taken from the, the A minor scale, or sometimes you've got the F sharp in there, so A Dorian, and sometimes there are one or two more dissonant notes in there as well, so you can experiment with that a little bit. But we're starting at the seventh fret on the D string, and then going down to the fifth fret. So there's lots of seven and five. We'll be going up to nine and 10. Sometimes going down to the fourth fret, that's that F sharp kind of Dorian note in there. 
Um, sometimes it goes up a little bit higher. Up to the 12th fret there. And it, at one point it works its way down a bit lower as well. So all the way down to the second fret. And then the the first fret there, that D sharp, that's a nice kind of dissonant note that, that Robert Smith sometimes plays. I think he sometimes plays that up higher as well. So th that's the general gist of the guitar solo. I'm just going to play through the first bit of the solo, which I've kind of transcribed note for note, just to give you the, the idea. But um, I, I really urge you not to try and learn it note for note, but to, to kind of do it your own way. But this is, is what I'm hearing on the record. Two, three, four. <laughs> continues in much the same way right at the end of the song it's working its way up really high up the neck we've got kind of and it's just kind of adding in some notes on the, the G and the B I think as well More, more kind of dissonant stuff there, so I'm not going to go through that note for note, but you can experiment with that a little bit if you want to. So that, roughly speaking, is how you play a forest. I think if you listen really closely to the recording, you can probably hear some extra overdubs and other little parts hiding in there, but I think I've covered all of the essentials that you need to play a decent version of this song. I'm going to go and have a lie down now. I think, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>